Hello class! Today, as a second day in our little animal head or decorative bottle opener series, I guess you could call it, uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to make one of these little pug heads. Now, I made this a little bit too short to actually put a bottle opener on. I used about six and a quarter inches of the one inch by a quarter inch steel for this. Uh, if you wanted to put a bottle opener on it, I would suggest maybe seven and a half to eight inches starting. Uh, this again doesn't work with many new principles. It is going to be a lot of uh, tooling work as you can tell. And uh, as you can also see, we are actually going to fold this over itself a few times. So just like with the snail, we are going to be introducing some bending points to this so that we can get uh, this nice crisp curve. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out about an inch worths of material and I'm going to start to make a shallow cut uh, using the hardy cut tool, not too difficult, uh, nothing that you haven't already done before. And my goal here is to cut maybe a little bit more than half the way through uh, just so that we get a nice bending point. Uh, if we didn't do this step, then we wouldn't get a smooth transition below the chin, and it would look more rounded than a sharp cutoff. And here you can kind, <clears throat> and here you can uh, see me just rounding off the corners. This is so the uh, top of the dog's nose doesn't look so blocky; it looks a little bit more natural. Once we get these rounded out, we will bend it over. As you can kind of see, I'm starting to get fish lips on the end of this. Ordinarily, that would be an issue if I was bringing this to a point, but here it actually helps the nostrils look a little bit more pug-like, you could say. And then just like on the top of the nose, we are going to round off the corners on the bottom. And on the bottom, is actually where you would want to have fish lips, uh, if anywhere, because it will give the illusion of some jowls that some pugs or uh, French bulldogs have. And you'll notice while you're working this that the uh, the nose or the snout will want to slide around and get out of orientation, uh, so you'll periodically want to smooth that back down. But here I am measuring about another inch from the top of the nose. And I almost make a big mistake here by hammering on the wrong side. Uh, so make sure that the side with the nose is facing down when you make this second cut. Otherwise the face would be inside out. I'm going to make another fold. And you can really see with the definition on the scale there uh, how much bending and shearing is going on on that cut transition. Now we're going to establish the ears. We're going to do that by hanging most of it off the side of the anvil, holding it at an angle, and you want to be very very careful at this point to make sure that the angles match on both ears. So the second ear I'm going to take a lot more time making sure it gets lined up. In the past, I've made a lot of these with lopsided ears. And at this point in the video, unfortunately, I started to lose some of the data. So you're only going to see me putting in one nostril. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a ball punch just below where the snout to face transition happens and punch those down. And similarly with the nostril, you're only going to see me put in one side of the mouth with this chisel, but we're going to hold that in, at an angle going from one jowl to the middle of the face. Obviously copy it on the other side and then make one line going up from where these two cuts meet to between the nostrils. Now this is an eye punch. Uh, this is a round eye punch, kind of looks a bit like a googly eye. We do have eye punches that are that almond shape that like humans have. Uh, I find on a pug that's a little 
off-putting. I think the derpier, googly eye style is uh, a little bit more fitting for a pug or a bulldog. But you will see the almond-shaped eye in the next video when I'm making a horse head. Now when you're putting in the eyes, you really want to take your time and make sure that your punches are lining up both times uh, so that you don't mess it up and it looks like you have two eyes overlaid. As you can see here, I'm using a center punch and this is just to put in some dots below the nostrils and above the mouth, which are like where the whiskers of the dog come out. And from this point, you would want to uh, put on a bottle opener or turn this into a hook or some other tool that you just wanted to have a decorative flare on. I've seen Dr. Showalter do a very similar design of animal head, which is a monkey. It's almost the exact same uh, steps, except the ears are different and the mouth is a bit different, but uh, he put a monkey's head on top of a monkey wrench. Uh, which is just one example of something that you could do with this other than a bottle opener. It's really quite a versatile thing to be able to put animal heads on. But that's how you make a pug.